everyone and welcome to part two on control for linear systems. We stopped in the last video with this discussion on, well, this is our control problem. We have these large vectors x, which is the state of dimension lowercase n times n plus one time steps, so a very large vector. And similar for this capital U, we had m dimensional inputs and n of them from u0 to u capital N minus one. And what the discussion was about is that actually what we're after is minimizing over u, not x. Huh? Because given u, we can compute the x um, in a straightforward fashion, in particular if we're dealing with linear systems. But what we had in the end was just um, a rewriting of the constraints of this form. Right? We saw there is a recursion, xk plus one is a times xk plus b times uk, and out of A and B, we could construct these giant G matrices and uh, also very large H matrix to make every X, so every part of this big X vector, depending on wh which time step we're in, a function of the past inputs plus the initial condition. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to minimize over U only, no longer over X. And so this is, uh, well, I, I've just started with this already and say I'm not going to minimize over x, so what I need to do is I need to get rid of the x in my equation, right? And so very conveniently in the way we have derived this, we see that we can simply insert the x here and then this will hopefully become a system that only depends on u and an additional parameter, the initial condition x0. And so let's try to do this. This is a couple of well, math steps, but basically it's just inserting this and then doing some, you know, linear algebra stuff. All right, so let's take a look at the objective function. We have x transpose q hat x plus, and so I'm trying going to try to make this color code for the u matrix to uh, keep track of what we're doing. So u transpose, this is my control panel, uh, penalization times u. All right, and so what I'm going to do next is insert for x this expression. So what I get is, I get instead of the x, this expression times q hat times this expression again. And so what we're going to see is that this is g times u plus b, uh, sorry, plus h, times x0, and the same here, g times u plus h times x0, right? So this is u, and this is x0. So what you're going to see is, due to this color code, um, hopefully what we're optimizing over u, and x0 will be a parameter on which the solution depends, right? Obviously, where we place the starting point should have an impact on how to control or pick the control input. Okay, so what's still missing is the second part that I just need to copy here, which is plus u transposed r hat times u. And so you see we have this large matrix equation and I can simply now summarize everything where u pops up in a quadratic form where u will pop up in a linear fashion and where we will have a constant term that depends on the parameter only. And so we will see that hopefully in the end we can recover a quadratic formula in the same way, okay? So what I will do now is in a few steps in between and you know, to shorten this, not do the color coding all the time, but maybe just identify them at the very end, how to do this, okay? So what we can do in the first step, we can separate the sum and we can separate the sum here as well, which will give us out of this one term, four terms exactly. So this is the matrix equivalent of the first binomial formula, if you wish. So what we're going to get is GU transposed times Q hat times GU. And now I'm going to use the second term, so HX0 transpose Q hat GU. Q hat and then times GU. 
Now I can use the other term, which would be this one times that one, right? So what I'm getting is G U transpose. So this term times Q hat times H X zero initial condition. And the fourth term will be this term, which does not depend at all on U. So H X not transposed you had h x not and the last term just remains the same plus u transposed r hat times u okay so even though i've you know omitted this nice coloring you will see what i did is just these becomes four terms this quadratic term two terms linear in u and one term which is a constant when it comes to the input u plus i've just copied the next term and so what I can do now is uh, I can summarize the quadratic terms, right? You see, you see this one is quadratic in U, and this one is quadratic in U. And what I need to do is I need to flip these two, right? A, a product of matrices transposed is the product of the transposed matrices, but just vice versa. So what I get, and now let's use the color coding once more, I get U transposed times and now, yeah, I, I reverted this, so this will be G transposed Q hat G times U once more, but I have also U transposed R hat U. So what I get here is, well, this is the Q matrix, my R hat matrix times U. Okay, so I have summarized the first and the last term, so this one. And this one. Next thing you can do is we can think about these terms a little bit, okay? So if you look at this, well, all of this is an objective function. So it's going to give me a scalar value. So it's a very large matrix times another matrix times the matrix times a vector, if you wish. And so this will, in the end, collapse into a scalar. And so whether I take this one, or I take this one, will give me the same scalar. It's just a huge transpose. So if I'm taking the transpose of, well, let's make this a big one. If I took the transpose of this entire thing here, this will give me the same number. So you see this term and this term is basically the same. So let's just, you know, transform this one into this one. So what I get is two times Um, and I can also resolve this bracket. So what I get is U transposed times G transposed Q hat H times my parameter X zero. Okay. And so this is, these two terms are summarized, right? So let's see that we have gotten rid of this one and we have gotten rid of this one so all that's left to done be done is this one and I can do the same trick here as well so I'm transposing this so what I get is plus x not transposed times h transposed u hat h times x not okay and so what you see now is I have very nicely transformed my original quadratic form into yet another quadratic form that is not dependent on the big X, well, not explicitly, but on the initial condition and the control U. And the dynamics are encoded in the G matrix, which uh, is basically the control input on the states, and the H matrix, which gives me the, the A part, so the, 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 the autonomous dynamics, if you wish. All right, and so what I've done is I have derived a new loss function that I can, or objective function that I can just call j hat of u. So this is what now really just a function that depends on u. And so what I get in the end as a summary is minimize over u, right, which is now a large vector, but still only this one j hat of u and the initial condition x0. Okay, so what you see is 
very nicely. It's a parametric control problem or high dimension optimization problem that can be solved. Right? And now two, three comments maybe, and then we're going to discuss the solution in a very, you will see this is very nice and easy now. Okay, so what we have not talked about is these assumptions are what you usually do. The Q matrix and the R matrix were composed of little Q and little R for the stage cost, so for every time step. And usually what you assume is that R is positive definite. And this will be transferred to our R hat matrix. So this is a um, positive definite matrix. The Q matrix usually is assumed to be positive semi-definite. This which means uh, if you have any vector times Q times the vector, so this quadratic form, um, what you will get is that this is a non-negative number. And so if Q is positive definite, semi-definite and the Q final as well, then we get the same structure for the Q hat, right? And so what you see is we have this transformation here um, and what we need to consider is sort of a rank condition on the G, right? This has to be, we're not going to discuss the details here, uh, which is encoded in the dynamics, which is closely connected to the notion of observability or more, more importantly, controllability here, okay? So let's say we have this rank condition in G on G, which I'm not going to discuss in detail here. Let's just assume that this is given, and so what we will get is a very, very nice situation, right? So what you see is that this is a quadratic form, and if this matrix is, you know, positive um, semi-definite, then this will always be a non-negative number, and well, this one needs to be taken care of, so this is why we have the rank conditions on G um, to have this of a specific form, and what we will find then that this is a convex optimization problem, right? And so what it has, it has a unique minimizer. So the best possible situation we can have, we just need to calculate the derivative and then we're basically done to solving this linear system, okay? So very closely related actually to how we solve regression problems. So structurally it's completely different, but the math we're going to need is basically the same. So let's consider this, right? If it's a convex problem, we have a unique minimizer, we just need to compute the derivative. So what you need to do is the derivative of j hat with respect to u, which is, now if you look at this, this is a quadratic form, so what you get is two times this uh, term times u basically, right? So what you get is two times this bracket, bracket, which was G transpose Q hat G plus R hat times uh, U plus the derivative with respect to U of the second term, which means the U just vanishes, okay? So it's two times G Q H X zero. at h x zero, and this has to be set to zero in order to have a minimum. Okay, and so what you see is that we actually obtain a linear system, right? So if we set this to zero, we can get rid of the two, and so what we will get is this expression, so g transposed q hat g plus r hat, of r times u is equal to minus, if I put this to the other side, equal to minus g transpose q hat h and now x0. Okay. And so it's a linear system, right? And this is the very, very cool feature that we have if we consider linear dynamic systems with this quadratic cost function after a little bit of algebra, obviously, and the, the, what we need to do is to assemble these matrices, we get a nice optimal solution by simply solving a linear system. And a parametric one at that, so if we vary the x0, 
we can solve this again for an arbitrary initial condition. So what you can actually do is, if you're you know, more of an expert in solving linear systems, one can decompose this matrix into, um, or QR decomposition for instance, which allows you to in the end very nicely solve this in a nice and easy fashion for varying initial conditions, which is what you need to solve feedback problems for instance. Okay, but this has been quite a bit. Um, let's stop here and in the next video we are going to study this in a lot of detail on a practical example. So thanks for watching and see you in part three.